you think you sent waves of shock through the wrestling world. Well, maybe you have, DBRC. Maybe you did get a victory, but it's a tainted victory, boy. Because the referee came in the ring and he raised the champ. That's right. The champ. He raised his hand because your partner, Dr. Death, couldn't make it. Compliments of, who yours truly. Now I'm going to explain something to you. He told you, and you better listen, he worked for that title all his life. And at the mere age of 25 years old, he sits on top of the wrestling world, on top of the universe. And no matter how long and how hard your family and your father drove you when you were a little kid to strive for something that could be so covenant, you're not going to get it because you're Mason with Bam Bam. You know, Terry Gordy, I was born and raised in professional wrestling. I'm what they call a second-generation wrestler. My late father, Mike DiBiase, was a uh, junior heavyweight champion in the world, an AAU national champion at Nebraska. I was raised on that heritage. I've wanted one goal all my life, and that's to be the best in my profession, professional, professional wrestling. I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm telling it like it is. I've held almost every major title there is to hold in wrestling except one. The Universal Wrestling Heavyweight Championship belt, the one that you have. You are the only holder of that belt. And now, everybody, Terry Gordy, knows that Ted DiBiase is capable of beating you. The only reason, Gordy, that that belt is around your waist today and not mine is one signature, one little piece of paper, a thing they call a contract that I didn't sign. Because in Houston, Texas, Gordy, I put your shoulders to the mat for a three count and I beat you. Well, now... That contract has been signed, and the only thing between me and that belt is another three count. And Terry Gordy, I know how to beat you. I see him in Power Pro Wrestling, and one of the most controversial situations in the sport is the Universal Wrestling uh, Federation Heavyweight Championship situation. Bill, uh, we're going to see some videotape in just a few moments. It's really going to explain the situation, but what are your thoughts on the situation as it stands now? Well, fortunately, I'm from a different era, and I'm in, from an era where you just geared up and you competed, and you just worried about your opponent in the ring. But I think the situation that's happened here is happening in all sports today, where it's so technical. You've got attorneys, you've got agents, you've got managers, you've got everybody involved. You've got to be sure you read your contracts. You've got to be sure every T is crossed, every I is dotted. And so sometimes by the time you get to the ring, somebody's maneuvering back in the, in the dressing room or back in the boardroom, so to speak, and I really abhor that. And that's what happened to Ted DiBiase. But without a doubt, the Universal Wrestling Federation is the most intense competition for any title anywhere in the wrestling scene. Some of these other places, you only see one or two contenders. Here you've got Ted DiBiase, and he's certainly going to get another title shot because I right. believe Ted DiBiase is right. You've got Hacksaw Jim Duggan. He's won a title shot. You've got Dr. Death Steve Williams. You've got the 490-pound one-man gang where we can't play favorites. He's got to get a title shot. you got Chavo Guerrero. you got Terry Taylor. you got Chris Adams. So you've got Terry Gordy sitting right in the middle of the hot seat with Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts to back him up and all the behind-the-scene manipulation. But it's all going to come down to who can kick somebody's tail in that ring. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to recap that uh, title situation starting with this. You're watching right here and right there, that man and other top athletes in UWF. For a while. Look at Gordy. It's, it's hard to say how much blood he has lost. He's still a fighting. He's fighting back. He's got a bad wheel. He knows this is the match of his life. At this point in time, this is the match. He's got to hold on to the title. Terry Bam Bam Gordy clearly showing the signs and effect of a brutal steel cage battle. And he's going for the power driver. And DBRC was able to stop the reverse. And if that power driver would have worked, if Gordy was able to follow through, this match could have been history. I think so, but I think just as it has happened, though, it could be very much the turning point. This could be the turning point right here. Oh. And DiBiase got him with a power driver. DiBiase has nailed Bam Bam. And Bam Bam is motionless. DiBiase's won it. Bam Bam is not moving. DiBiase has defeated Terry Bam Bam Gordy. The crowd is going crazy. Ted DiBiase has become the second man to hold the UWF Heavyweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Hayes not on the program today. This interview pre-taped prior to going on the air. And Michael, it's a little bit coincidental in my opinion, the fact that you not being on the program 
on a very exciting hour, does it have anything to do with the fact that Teddy Biasi beat Terry Gordy in Houston? Perhaps it's a little coincidence, maybe? Well, here you go with your little investigative reporter routine, right? You know, when you have a football game, if you had Oklahoma against Miami, right, and you prepare it all week for Miami, would it be fair to throw in Nebraska? No. No, it wouldn't. Well, why was it fair for Ted DiBiase to come down and take Dr. Death's place? Because Dr. Death couldn't make the match, could he? Well, I understand the champion's a little upset about the situation. A little upset is put it mildly. He might be. He might have something to say, but... Uh, yeah, the champion does have something to say. And you'll get to see what he had to say. And this was immediately after this attempted ripoff. Grand theft, if you put it like that. You know, that's almost like a federal offense. Your face looked funny behind bars if you were part of this bureaucracy, wouldn't it? So I'm going to let you hear what the champion had to say. But remember, this was immediately after this ripoff tried to take place. Since then, he has had a meeting with me and Buddy. And he told us specifically that he's going to take care of this and that he's got some big, big surprises. And you'll see what we're talking about next week. Now let's talk to the champ. Ted DiBiase, let me tell you something, boy. You got something that don't belong to you. It belongs to me. It's something that I've worked long and hard for. There ain't no West Texas punk gonna come and steal my title away from me like that because you know what's gonna happen. All hell's gonna break loose, boy, because you might have been a heck of a football player at West Texas State. But you're with the big boys now, and you got something that belongs to Terry Bam Bam Gordy. And that's the universal heavyweight title. Like I said, Ted DiBiase, I worked long and hard for it. And ain't you or nobody else going to take it away from me. You've seen it just like he said. Worked for it all his life. And he ain't going to have no punk like you take it, DiBiase. I think what the champ said was enough. And the surprise next week will speak for itself. Well, Michael Hayes has made his comments perfectly clear. The surprise coming next week. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to have a word with Ted DiBiase. October 17th was a tremendous night in the career of Ted DiBiase. But it also, as it ended, Ted, had to be one of the most controversial nights in UWF history. I don't know of anyone that can explain this situation better than you. What is the status at this point in time of that match? Well, the bottom line is this, Jim. When the Freebirds and Terry Gordy, Michael Hayes, and their lawyers went to the officials from the Universal Wrestling Federation. The UWF's hands were tied because the bottom line is I did not sign a contract. I went out there, I was given permission to take Doc's place. I wrestled Terry Gordy. I pinned him in the middle of the ring. But because the contract was not signed, I am not legally the champion. I know the, the fans here in Tulsa certainly obviously don't agree with that that uh, judgment, but the bottom line was, and Hayes called everybody's hand on this situation, no contract was signed. That's true, That's the, and that is the bottom line. Unofficially, or officially, I am not the champion. But what this did, what this did, is it opened the door for me. A lot of you people know that you know my history, you know my background. I'm what you call a second generation wrestler. From day one in my life, I have lived, grown up, been nurtured, and lived and breathed professional wrestling. It's been my lifelong dream, my lifelong goal to be the best at my profession, to follow my father's footsteps, who was an AAU national champion out of Nebraska. He was a world junior heavyweight champion. I came from a great wrestling heritage, and I like to live up to my, my father's name and going on with my career. Now, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just stating the facts. I have held almost every major title in wrestling that there is to hold except one, Terry Gordy, the Universal Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. And the only reason is because my name was not on the bottom line, not on the contract. Now, 
It's been said many times, Jim Ross, I've heard you say it a thousand times, Ted DiBiase is the master tactician. For every trick, for every trick in the book, Terry Gordy, I know another one. And what I know most of all right now, I'm not here to say that I can beat you or that I, or anything else, I have beat you. And I know how to beat you. And the next time, the next time, that it comes up, and it'll come up very soon because of what happened, I guarantee you my name will be on the bottom line, and that belt is coming home with me. Those comments from Ted DiBiase, and we'll have more UWF action after this. Time out. <laughs> Thank you.